He was born in Glasgow, 1922, which makes me 84 now. I think. So, see, my brother had joined the army, and uh, because he was killed, they actually gave me three months leave, you know, because it was my, my parents, it was really tough on them, you know. But they, they, they eventually called me up. They were advertising for paratroops because the paratroops came into being. In the First World War, there was a big fort on the, on the French lines, and the Germans had never been able to capture it, right? When the Germans attacked, the first attack they made, they dropped paratroops out of this fort, and within half an hour, they, they, they dropped grenades down the air vents and they, they, uh, they surrendered in, there's no option, they surrendered in half an hour. When Churchill heard that, he says, we must have paratroops. So the word went out, enemy wanted to join us paratroops, you know, regiments of training people, they didn't want to lose them after they've been trained. He says, if anybody wants to join the paratroops, you release them. So that was how we had the first, uh, we all the Allies, Britain was the first to, to join it, to get a, an M1 division. We would, we would land inland, right, and the other, the other troops would come in at the coast, you know, and you had to, you had to, you had to guard these roads that were going to the coast. I mean, it was tough too because you were landing right in amongst the enemy, you know. So we had a lot of casualties too, you know. But it was worth it because you're saving the lives of thousands of guys coming in at the coast. You know, when you were jumping on a plane, besides having your, your uh, regular weapons and ammunition, you had other heavier, got like uh, mortars and things like that strapped to your legs, you know, and uh, all sorts of gadgets, you know, because you should, should, it was dangerous. I mean, if you you could land in that, that would cause you to break your leg, you know, if you, if you can do it hard. And uh, but then this was the only other way, or the only other way they would have containers, the big containers, and they'd have even heavier equipment and that, you know. But what happened to me one of the times, when you know that because you had all this equipment, your harness was covering over that, right? And in this instance, it's, it must have been still slack, although I thought it was tight. It was with this, we're having all this gear in, underneath. So you had, a, you had all your equipment, and you had a, a smock went over there, so there was nothing would catch on your cards when you came out when the plane, you know, when the show opened up. And uh, anyway, this time, as I went out of the plane, I went right out of the harness, right, right up to here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Talk about a shock, you know. But as I say, I managed to get back, managed to get back up. And I'm thinking, come on, I'm holding on the, the harness, you know. But what it was, was this equipment here, underneath this shop, this smock, they called it. Yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was tight. I thought my harness was tight. And it really wasn't, it was slack, you know. And uh, that was the only time I had timed it, you know. That was the only time I nearly went. Because I was like, ah, oh, they wouldn't, right? If, if I hadn't had my, my arms like this, I'd have went right with the harness, head first. Nothing to stop me, you know. Because, because you're landing near the coast, you know, and it happened quite a lot of times, they would drop you in the sea, you know, because there was, there was a couple of, couple of lines like that. It was all fog, you, shouldn't, you know, you're, cut, you're at night time, but that's bad enough. But ground fog, you know, especially in these areas, you know, they, 
they alarm us because of the better temperatures, you know, summer temperatures. You don't know, didn't know where you were going. So at times it was pretty bad, the amount of casualties just getting drowned. And when you went into the sea with all that equipment, you had to carry all your weapons, you know, on you. And that was machine guns, ammunition, and you were really, you were really loaded up with stuff, you know. And uh, luckily, I never, I never, <laughs> I never run in the sea. Uh, and there again, because the enemy always had the, they had, they had all the weapons and they, they had the armies and that. We only had the way. We could only, we had, could only survive until the Allies came, you know, came forward and relieved us. That was the, that was the, 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 the and also, even when planes get shot down too, and uh, crashing, of course, and especially the gliders. There's a lot of casualties with the gliders coming in. You know, you know, they were playing. They would hit all three gliders each, you know, and just release them. So they were on own then too. So there's a lot of casualties there too, because they didn't, you know, they're. They land, they were landing amongst trees and all sorts, and these, these, uh, these gliders were very fragile, you know. And when they hit amongst trees, they were, they had a lot of casualties too. When you're by yourself, you try, you try to go, you know, you try to meet. If you're lucky, and a few of you get together, well, at least you have a better chance. But when you're on your own. And you don't know where you are, you know. It's just you don't know where you're north, south, east, or west, right? Especially amongst trees. Like when we landed in when we landed in France, you know, it was it was mountainous, you know, and there was a lot of trees there as as well. But. Uh, Where we landed, we landed right in this forest. So we first of all, <laughs> we have no idea what direction to go, right? And luckily, we eventually got to the edge of this forest, right? And it was it was just a small group, you know. And uh, I said, well, we better wait. Just just better wait the shelter of the trees here to see if we can see any of our guys coming, you know. But we'd seen a couple of trucks going up, but it looked like German trucks. So we, we, we waited till they had gone, and then we started moving out about across this big field. And uh, that was a poison factory, we had that. We had that big two, you know. Uh, two years ago, they actually held it there. And uh, the main thing was to all try and get, you know, get the other, get all together eventually, you know. So as you would, if you met a large amount of the enemy, they would, it'd be you or them, right? 